Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about impulse, okay? Now, go ahead, drop this down so we can talk about it for a sec, and then um, we'll go ahead and do an example problem. Okay. Now, the reason impulse is sometimes kind of confusing or even hard to find on a formula sheet, the letter for impulse is J, just as a heads up, okay? Now, the formula, there are two formulas for impulse. Impulse is equal to the average force times your change in time. And what your an F average, of course, is average force. Its units need to be in Newtons. And your change in time, this is the time that something is in contact with, okay? And so whenever something's in contact with in some T amount of time, that's your delta T. Impulse is also equal to your change in momentum. Momentum, by the way, is P. And P is equal to M times V. And so you're going to do final minus initial, and m, of course, is mass, better be in kilograms, and v is velocity, better be in meters per second. Okay, so let's do an example. That way we can kind of see how this works. Oh, also, too, this is a vector, so you better keep direction in mind. The direction in which it moves, whether it be positive or negative direction, um, affects your final answer. Okay, so it says the mass of a regulation tennis ball is 57 grams. And tests have shown that the ball is in contact with a tennis racket for 30 milliseconds. The fastest known served tennis ball was measured at 73.14 meters per second. Part A, what impulse and what force was exerted on the tennis ball? Okay, go to part A. What I like to do here is let's just jot down everything that's given to us. They told me the mass. They said mass is 57 grams, which is going to be 0 0.057 kilograms. Make sure you're in the correct units. The ball is in contact with the tennis racket for 30 milliseconds. And so your change in T is equal to 0 0.03 seconds. The fastest known served tennis ball was measured at 73.14. And so my velocity uh, is equal to 73.14 meters per second. Part A, what impulse and what force was exerted on the tennis ball? Well, if I want to find impulse J, one thing I can do is I have a mass, a time, and a V, but more specifically, I have an M times V. Now, impulse is equal to our change in momentum, which is PF minus P naught. Now, initially, whenever you start, and we're, uh, we're also imagining purely horizontal, purely horizontal initially tennis ball ain't moving. It's after you hit it with the racket that you're actually going somewhere. And so your impulse is equal to m times v, which is the 0 0.057 kilograms times the 73.14 meters per second. And so let's go ahead and throw that into our calculator. So we have 0 0.057 times 73.14 what we get is we'll call that 4.17. We'll call this 4.17, and units for impulse are just newton seconds, just a heads up, but 4.17. And now that I have that, I can find the second part, which what force was exerted on the tennis ball. Well, I can use this second equation, and I know that your force, your average force, is equal to your impulse over my change in time. Impulse we just found to be 4.17 newton seconds, and it was in contact with the racket for 0.03 seconds. And so, plugging this into our calculator, 4.17, or hey, we already got that, so that divided by 0.03, we're going to get, we'll call it 139. It's equal to 139 newtons. And that's part A. Let's take a look at part B, though. Part B, if the ball is returned with a speed of 55 meters per second, what force and impulse did he exert on the ball, assuming only horizontal motion? Okay, so we got to be careful. So my what's going to happen is the tennis ball is initially moving with a V-naught of 73.14 meters per second, but then it struck back. It struck back with a final velocity 
of 55 meters per second. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call to the right the positive x direction. Once again, I don't care which way you set your positive x direction to be, just make it consistent. Okay, so now that I have that, let's find impulse. Impulse, J, is equal to my change in momentum, which is equal to MVF minus MV0. Okay, well this is equal to M times will do VF minus V0. Let's factor out that M. Okay, my mass. My mass is still 0 0.057 kilograms. My VF is 55, but notice the direction. Notice how VF is moving in the negative direction. So because it's moving in the negative direction, it's going to be a negative 55 meters per second minus V0 v not 73.14, 73.14 meters per second. reason I left that positive is because it's moving well in the positive direction. And so VF minus v not is going to be minus 55, that's your VF, minus the 73.14. And so let's go ahead and put that into our calculator. So we're going to do this uh, 0 0.057 times negative 55 minus 73.14. Um, we're going to get negative 7.3. Negative 7.3 Newton seconds. So there's my impulse there. And then if I want to find the uh, average force, we you know F average is equal to your impulse over my change in time. Impulse is negative 7.3. Newton seconds, and we'll say he was also in contact for 0.03 seconds. And so whenever we take the number we just found and divide it by 0.03, we get, uh, we'll call it negative, we'll call it negative 243.5. I'll do that. So let's go negative 243.5 Newtons. And these should be negative. Because had mathematically you come out with a positive answer, uh, <laughs> what a positive impulse and force would have um, implied was as the ball is moving towards this guy, so here's the guy with the racket, he would have um, <laughs> hit it in the positive direction. <laughs> Which that would not have been a very good tennis move. Okay, He definitely hit it back in the negative direction because that's usually what you're supposed to do um, in tennis. Anyways, um, that's how you deal with impulse. It's not too bad as long as you know these two equations. Keep direction in mind. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So join me in my next video and we'll start doing momentum problems, okay? So um, that's impulse.